Hey guys, Philip Lenz of Lenz Photography here. I'm going to do a little walkthrough of a composite that we did recently for you guys. But first, before we get started, if you want to check out lensnose.com, we have all of our social media links here, and we have a bar where you can send in your email. We'll notify you when we put out new tutorials. It's kind of an up-and-coming project of ours to do, so... Uh, it may take us a little while to get things up, but if you do send in your email and follow us on social media, you will be informed when we put new stuff up. So let's get started. I'm going to try to do this all in one take, so if I sound like an idiot, just trash me in the comments. So here we go. This folder right here is the uh, source, fol or source file folder. I've got all the shots that we used for the composite here. You see these are the regular JPEGs. Of course, after we did our raw edits, you can see the lighting on these looks pretty good. But as far as the background, it was kind of bland and boring. Not really too much that we can do once we showed up. We had never actually been in the gym before. And, you know, that's the way it goes a lot of times. You show up to a new spot. So we knew we wanted to do something a little extra for these kids. A lot of them are just really cool kids, really good athletes. We worked with them for years. So... We wanted to do something more like this. This is a composite that we did uh, probably, let's see, four or five months ago. The smoke was in one file. We created the floor out of another file and the lines on the floor. So you can see kind of how this all came together. These are the uh, cutout files that we've saved PSDs here. And I guess for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, this is the composite that we're going to be uh, showing you how to do in Photoshop today. Again, you can see the floor, the smoke that's just stretched out from the other file. So let me open Photoshop here. can kind of show you this is what the cutout looked like of this individual kid right here. Again, here's the source file. The first thing I did was just duplicate that into a new layer because Photoshop hates you for some reason if you want to try to cut out something on a background layer. Not sure why, but uh, the method we used to cut these out was with the quick selection tool. I can show you how to do that a little bit here. Make my brush a little bit bigger with the bracket keys. Go to my first layer. Then I'm just going to kind of paint around inside him, and it's going to do a pretty good job selecting. We shot these, I think, probably around F11 just so the subject was pretty sharp and easy to cut out. A lot of times when you're doing a composite, you don't want to shoot at a real shallow depth of field because then the edges on the subject will be soft where you're already getting some blur there. It'll be really hard to select those edges. As you see, it's still having a little bit of a hard time selecting some of these edges. I'm not really going to go through everything step by step, but it's kind of showing you a really quick way. Let's see, then I hold Alt, get rid of some of this floor here. This is going to be a really tough part in between the shorts. Well, it actually did a decent job there. And then, okay, after I did this, zoom in so you can see, let me go back to my quick selection brush. I refine the edges. You can see here on the hair, it just looks kind of messed up. You'll go to the Refine Radius tool and just paint around the hair here. It'll pick up those little pieces of hair, make it look more natural, not like you just cut it out and paste it onto a background. It's thinking here. And let's see. That's the after. That's the before. So you can see how you can just get a little bit more texture in that hair. When you output... I always output to a new layer with layer mask. I'm not going to output this layer because obviously I didn't do a great job cutting it out. But let me fit this back on screen and you can see this is our actual cutout that we did. You can see how good the edges are here. I just went around and selected. Here's the thing that I should have showed you was how you can switch to a different selection method. So say I have a lot of him selected right here and then see these shorts are given it a problem since this background is really dark right here. I can go to something like the polygonal lasso or whatever selection tool you prefer and I need to remove this selection so I'm going to hold alt and you'll see the little minus comes up. 
So then I can just kind of go around the leg here, go around the shorts. Again, I'm just doing this really quick, so it's going to be kind of sloppy, but you get the idea. Close that off, and you can see it got rid of those parts that sometimes the quick selection tool will mess up on. So, again, this is our cutout. Basically what I did was I just selected this layer here with the layer mask and everything, hit V for my move tool, and I just pulled him off and dropped him in this layer. I'm going to hit cancel because I don't actually want to drop him in my layer now. And then I'm going to go back to this composite and kind of just give you a walkthrough of everything we did. You can see there's a million layers here, but again, I'm going to try to go through everything really quick. Let's see if okay, starting from just the background here, I made a layer one, just filled it with black. I knew it was going to be kind of a dark background. And then that's when we pulled off our source images for the background, like I showed you before with the uh, other basketball player. Let me see if I still have that pulled up. This girl right here, we pulled off the floor, we created that in its own layer, and then we pulled off the smoke, and we created that in its own layer from the PSD that we saved before. So it's really important to save your PSDs if you're going to do a anything major, like this big composite or something. So again, layer one, just filled with black. Then here's where we started creating the floor. This is the source file. You see this is a, I think this is a 10 by 20 or just a really long and narrow file. So we had to stretch that floor out. So you can see I have all these layers marked off the layers that I've actually turned off. So here's the floor stretched out, which all we did was hit Command T, stretch that to be about the size of the background. And that's what it turned into. Um, then I added a layer mask on this kind of just bleeded it in, almost looked like some fall off from the lighting that we had or something. Uh, I just kind of like to do that. It just kind of draws the eye more towards the center of the photo instead of all the way out here on the edges. And also just makes it, kind of sells the effect a little bit more since the boys had some dramatic lighting on them. And then we're not going to worry about this layer because that was something that I was attempting to do and decided not to. But after this, on the floor, this is when I zoomed in and created the lines on the gym floor, which all I did here was use the line tool. I'm not really sure which, uh, how many pixels that line was or anything, but uh, you kind of get the idea how to do that. It's pretty simple, just line tool, drag it out. I went with the uh, wood grain here to make it realistic looking. And then I'm pretty sure I just... On this layer, you can see it says Shape 3 Copy up here. I just hit Command J, copied that into a new layer, and then I just hit Command T and flipped it. So that way I didn't have to, you know, guess and make another line and say, oh, is this the same size? Is this the same angle? I just flipped it over so I know that these are exactly the same, and it kind of takes out the guesswork. And then this uh, next shape is just the baseline back there. So you can see how this kind of looks more like a basketball court, you know. Before it was just a wood floor. Um, another thing I meant to mention on these is I put these on overlay, so which that one back there is getting kind of dark. But you can see how you can see through them a little bit. Kind of just gives more of the effect that they're really there on the floor and not just a black line that I painted. So then next I added some adjustment layers. If you don't know how to do that, these are up here under adjustments. Um, this first one is brightness contrast. And the next one is hue saturation. Kind of desaturated the floor a little bit. Let me see if I can pull up the actual settings that I used here. Uh, yes, right here. So you see I turned the contrast up to 45. And then on hue saturation, I basically just pulled down the saturation so the floor isn't just popping out and making you want to stare into it, which I know this doesn't look like the most epic of things right now, but once it all comes together, it really matches the scene. So next, that's when I imported the smoke layer, did the same thing as we did with the floor, and I just hit Command-T and stretched it out, kind of made it the same width. 
that's the photo right here. And then you can see I have group one with the boys that I pulled in from their uh, cutout PSDs. And you can see they're really huge right here. What I did was I pulled them all in and kind of scaled them how I wanted, or not scaled them, but just put them in the positions that I wanted. But then I made another copy of the group just in case I screwed something up. I had this other group that I could have went back to. That way I didn't have to, you know, just delete all those, start over, pull back in all my little cutout source files of each individual boy and drag them back in. I, I like to make a lot of copies to work with. That way if I do mess up on something, it just saves me time in the long run. So the next thing that I started doing was, you can see here it's starting to come together. You see all the boys standing there, but there's no shadows or anything under their feet, no reflections. It kind of just looks like they're floating there. It doesn't really look that realistic. So what I did was start drawing the shadows on. And where I got the shadows from, let me see if I can pull back up this here. You can see on the floor right here what kind of shadows. We use two rim lights on each side, so you have a shadow going to the left, and you have a shadow going toward the right. So what I tried to do is basically just emulate the shadows that were there in the original files to make it look as realistic as possible. And all I did there was I put my made a new layer, put it on multiply for the blend mode. You can see I took the opacity down a little bit. And all I did was just use a very soft brush with black and just kind of paint it underneath their feet. These lines going out this way and just made it look as much like the original shadows as I could. It's nothing really, um, you know, there's no specific technique or anything. There might be some other way that somebody else teaches that is a better method, but that's just what I do. I like to kind of hand paint them on there. And then after I changed my blend mode to multiply and took my opacity down a little bit. That's when I did some adjustments. I made a clipping mask, which only affects this layer by itself here. And uh, how to make a clipping mask, all you need to do is you click hue saturation adjustment layer up here, and then you'll actually click on the layer and right click, uh, right click it, and then you'll go to uh, create clipping mask. You see here it says uh, release cl uh, clipping mask right now since it's already enabled. But that just means it only affects this layer underneath it here. You can't really see a lot of what it's doing, but uh, off. It, it just kind of, these shadows had a little too much color and saturation in them on the floor since I put it on the multiply blend mode. So basically all I did was just took the saturation down a little bit, made it look more realistic. This next layer I did the same exact thing, but the shadows out to the other side. So you can see now you got a shadow going out to the left. You have a shadow going out to the right on each one of them. And it's starting to look more realistic now. It looks less and less like they're floating. But I wanted to add one more thing, and um, it's kind of more of a special effect. Let me turn that clipping mask on for that shadow layer right there. The uh, Let's see, this layer right here, I just kind of fixed that shadow right there a little bit. Something that I just kind of messed up and decided to make a new layer for. But this next one is, this one took a little bit more work. What I did was I, you see it says group one copy right here. I actually copied the entire group, so all the boys right here. And then what I did was flip them all upside down. And then I put this underneath their actual layer so it looks like these reflections are under their feet it looks like a reflection on the floor like it was a really polished floor and then all I did was added layer mask to each one of them you can see as I toggle off and on see that is the uh, reflection to this kid right here so you can see I just have more control when I have each one on each separate layer I could have easily just merged one of the whole group but this way I can just add a layer mask on each one of them and in certain areas, you know, where there's a reflection sticking out the back here, I can just kind of turn on this mask and mask it off a little bit, just make it look really realistic. So again, you see reflections. I put the blend mode on overlay, lower the opacity to 60% there, and it legitimately looks like a real reflection on the polished floor there. So now these next couple of steps, almost to the finish line here. This is just the merge layer of everything. I 
Don't think I did anything there. Just merged everything together to this point so I could do things like clean up in the background and stuff like that. That way I'm not having to go back on each separate individual layer. You just got to make sure you're at a good um, finishing point with everything before you merge everything into one layer. Because once you've done that, you know, if I wanted to shift this over in the background or something like that, I really wouldn't have control of that, and I would have to scrap this layer, go back, start over, and redo anything that I'd done to that point. So I merged this layer, and uh, this next layer, there's a couple different ways you can get this effect. You can see it just adds a little bit of contrast, adds a little bit of sharpness. If I zoom in a little bit, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Let's see. Well, you can see I also removed a couple little things under, like bags under the eyes, just a light retouching. But this was actually a bleach bypass layer, which is a filter under Nick software. Basically, all it is is um, it's very similar to the clarity slider, except I feel like it's just, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit finer sharpening. It doesn't give you as much halos and that nasty look that um, clarity does if you pop it too much. I always like to pop the sports photos with a little bit of the bleach bypass just because it makes them have that extra grittiness that you're looking for without making your photos look just too over sharpened or something like that. So if you don't have uh, Nick Sharp or Nick software, excuse me, a way to do this would be Search tutorials on um, high-pass sharpening, things like that are really similar, and you can get very similar effects. And the next thing, the next layer here, is also a dark and light and center. You can see it kind of just draws your eyes to the boys there. And you can do the same thing in Photoshop or I'm sure other programs, but this is another thing that I did in Nick software. Basically, all it, it allows me to just make a gradient here, which I lighten the boys up, and then a darker gradient around the outside at the same time. That way I'm not sitting here drawing a white circular gradient on this layer, f uh, fiddling with the opacity, making another layer, making a vignette around the photo. So again, off and on, you can see that just adds that extra little pop, draws the eyes up here some more. And then these last layers here that I have is dodging. Click that off and on a couple times so you can see what I did. Just brought out some of the highlights to the jerseys, to the shorts, to the faces, to the arms. Really light, though. They're kids, so I didn't want to make it um, just too overdone, you know. And then the next layer is also a burn layer. You can see I did mostly around the jaw lines. Again, I may have hit some areas like around, you know, biceps, things like that, just to make them look really tough and muscular. And this next layer, kind of unimportant. This is getting a little um, nitpicky, but you see he has a different basketball here. I kind of just wanted to darken up the lines in that basketball there just to uh, make it look like a little bit of better of a ball since all of them have better basketballs. And then this is just the merged final layer on top here. Um, I don't or yeah, I don't think I did much to it other than just remove this little bit of smoke behind his head here. It's a little bit distracting. I noticed it at the very end and said, you know what, I'm just going to remove that, get rid of it. But other than that, um, that's kind of the editing in a nutshell. I know I didn't really fully explain some of these other things, like how I did these dodge and burn layers. But um, there's other tutorials out there. This is kind of just a first walkthrough so you can see how it was done. You can maybe attempt some of these on your own if you don't know how to pull off some of these techniques. There's other tutorials out there. But um, again, like I said, make sure to check out lensnose.com. Check out all of our social media links here. We're going to be putting out better videos than this, hopefully. So um, if this video sucked, if you hate me, Again, just trash me in the comment section. I love to read how stupid I am. But uh, if you loved it, feel free to, um, I don't know, don't do anything, I guess. But uh, thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Hopefully this helped. And um, just remember, Lynn's nose.